For 16 million years, Megalodon was the ocean's undisputed psychopath. It was nearly 60 feet of pure nightmare fuel with jaws that could crush a car. But there was one creature that made this apex predator think twice before showing up to the hunting grounds. And frankly, it should terrify you even more. This is the story of the Livia 10. Picture this, you're living 15 million years ago and you decide to go for a swim. Bad idea, buddy. The ocean back then wasn't the relatively peaceful place we know it today. It's not even really peaceful today, but it was worse back then. It was basically nature's version of a medieval torture chamber, except it had more teeth. The whole planet was running a fever at the time. Temperatures were cranked up everywhere and the oceans were like giant warm bathtubs. Now, you might think warm water sounds nice. It's not because warm water means more plankton. More plankton means more small fish, and more small fish means more big fish. And more big fish means more absolutely massive things that want to eat everything in sight. See, back in the Miocene era, the ocean had figured out how to make the perfect prey animal. They were called Belian whales, and they were basically swimming buffets. These things were slow, fat, and completely defenseless. We're talking about whales that were 10 feet long and packed with a blubber. They moved in predictable patterns, traveled in groups, and had the survival instincts of a grocery store rotisserie chicken. And there were millions of them, everywhere. The ocean was absolutely stuffed with these walking, well, swimming Happy Meals. If you were a predator back then, this was heaven. Free food delivery that never stopped coming. But here's where things get interesting. When you have this much easy food floating around, evolution gets creative, really creative. And by creative, I mean it starts building monsters that would make Godzilla start looking intimidated. The geography helped too. After Pangaea broke up, you had all these semi-enclosed seas and coastal areas. Think of them as prehistoric hunting grounds. There was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, just pure concentrated carnage. The fossil record from places like Peru shows us exactly what was going on at the time. And what was going on was basically an underwater horror movie that lasted for millions of years. This wasn't your modern ocean where big predators have to work for all their meals. This was nature running an all-you-can-eat special, and at the top of this feeding frame, Frenzy sat Megalodon. For 16 million years, this thing had it made. Unlimited food, no real competition, and a body plan that was basically a living meat grinder. It had perfected the art of whale hunting to the point where it was almost boring. Show up, bite something in half, repeat. The ocean's apex predator had become comfortable maybe too comfortable. Because when you're the undisputed champion for that long, you start to assume things will never change. You develop habits, patterns. You get good at hunting one specific type of prey in one specific way. And that's exactly what Megalodon did. It became the ultimate whale killing machine. It was perfectly adapted to hunt slow, fat, defenseless baleen whales in warm, predictable waters. What it didn't expect was that evolution was working on something else entirely, something that wasn't following the current rules. While Megalodon was busy perfecting its technique on easy targets, nature was quietly cooking up one of the ocean's biggest and most dangerous predators. This wasn't just another big shark or another whale to chomp on, but something fundamentally different. And it was about to turn this whale paradise into a war zone. Enter Leviathan Melvili. And right off the bat, you're probably thinking, oh great, Another whale, how scary can it be? Well, congratulations on completely missing the point. This wasn't your typical whale. This was what happened when evolution looked at the whole gentle giant of the sea concept and said, you know what, we're not doing that. First off, the name, Liviatin Melvili named after the biblical sea monster and Herman Melville, the guy who wrote Moby Dick. So right there, scientists were basically saying this thing was legendary levels of terrifying, and they weren't exaggerating. The teeth alone should make you deeply uncomfortable. We're talking about 36 centimeter long teeth. That's over a foot long for you Americans. Each tooth. And unlike your modern sperm whale, which has tiny, useless teeth in comparison that are only built for grabbing squid, Leviathan had a full set of these monsters in both its upper and lower jaws. Both jaws. That's important because it means this whale wasn't sucking up its dinner. It was ripping it apart to shreds. Now, you might be wondering what kind of whale needs teeth that big. Well, valid question. The answer is a whale that hunts other whales. Not krill, not fish, other whales specifically, 
those fat, slow baleen whales that Megalodon loved so much. Leviathan had looked the same all-you-can-eat buffet and decided to set up shop right next to the competition. And its size, it was up to 57 feet long. Yes, it was built to be a pure predator. This put it right in Megalodon's weight class. Finally, something that could look a 60-foot shark in the eye and not immediately become lunch. The ocean had never seen anything quite this ridiculous before. A whale with the attitude of a great white shark and the equipment to back it up. But here's what made Leviathan really special. Most whales, even the predatory ones, stick to their own lane. Killer whales hunt seals and fish. Sperm whales hunt squid in the deep ocean. Everyone has their niche. Everyone plays nice. Leviathan threw that whole system out of the window. It showed up to Megalodon's territory and started hunting Megalodon's favorite prey using the Megalodon's own tactics. The skull tells the whole story. While modern sperm whales have these long, narrow heads perfect for deep sea squid hunting, Leviathan had a short, wide, absolutely massive skull. This was a head built for violence. The jaw muscles alone were enormous. We're talking about bite strength that could crush bone, not just slice through it, but crush it. And unlike other whales in the ocean, Leviathan hunted at the surface, right where the Megalodon did its business. There was no avoiding each other, no staying in separate parts of the ocean. These two were destined to meet, and when they did, it wasn't going to be a polite conversation about who owns which territory. What's really wild is that Leviathan fossils have been found in all parts of the world, Peru, Chile, Australia, even California. This wasn't some local nightmare. This was a global phenomenon. Everywhere Megalodon ruled, Leviathan showed up to crash its party. For the first time in 16 million years, Megalodon had competition real competition, not some smaller shark that knew its place or a pack of smaller whales that could be scared off. This was a single predator that could match it pound for pound, tooth for tooth, and attitude for attitude. The ocean's food chain had just gotten a lot more complicated. Two apex predators, same size, same prey, same hunting grounds. Something had to give. And for the first time in its long dominant reign, Megalodon probably started to realize it might not be the scariest thing in the water anymore. What it didn't know was that teeth and size were just the beginning. Here's what Megalodon didn't see coming. Leviathan had something to a scale that no other predator in the ocean possessed. Something that changed the entire game. A brain that actually worked. Now, before you roll your eyes and think this is going to be some boring lecture about whale intelligence, stick with me. Because this isn't just about being smart. This about the difference between fighting a machine and fighting something that can think three steps ahead of you. Sharks, for all of their success, run on what you might call a very simple operating system. See prey, hunt prey, eat prey. Repeat until dead. It's effective, sure, but it's also predictable. Megalodon had been using the same hunting playbook for 16 million years. Ambush from below, bite something vital, wait for it to bleed out, rinse and repeat. Leviathan threw that whole system into chaos. This whale could learn, it could adapt, it could remember. If Megalodon tried the same attack twice, Leviathan would be ready for it the second time, maybe even the first time, because this whale had something else that made Megalodon's life miserable. Echolocation active sonar. While Megalodon was swimming around hoping to catch something off guard and using its sense of smell, Leviathan was actively scanning the entire area with sound waves. It could see everything. The shape of the sea floor, schools of fish, other whales, and most importantly, any 60-foot shark trying to sneak up from below. You know, horror movies always work because the monster attacks from where you can't see it coming? Well, Leviathan basically had x-ray vision for the entire ocean. Good luck with your surprise attacks now, Megalodon. But the real nightmare was that Leviathan wasn't just smart and aware. It was armed to the teeth. Literally, those foot-long teeth weren't there just to be scary. As we mentioned earlier, they were attached to jaw muscles that could crush bone. And here's where things start to get really unfair. Megalodon's entire skeleton was made of cartilage. You know, that soft, bendy stuff in your nose and ears. It's great for being flexible and lightweight. It is terrible for surviving something that specializes in crushing bone. Leviathan's bite was basically designed to destroy exactly the kind of skeleton that Megalodon had. Oh, but wait, there's more. Because apparently just having a brain and bone-crushing teeth wasn't enough. Leviathan also had that massive, weird-shaped head filled with something called the spermaceti organ. Modern sperm whales use it for deep diving and echolocation, but some scientists think Leviathan might have weaponized it. Picture getting rammed by tons and tons of angry whale traveling at top speed. Now picture that whale having a built-in battering ram specifically designed for high-speed collisions. That head could probably punch a hole through a concrete wall. And if that 
wasn't bad enough, there's a theory that Lydia 10 could use focused sound blasts as a weapon, just like modern sperm whales. Modern sperm whales are one of the loudest animals on the planet. They can produce clicks that would likely rupture your eardrums if you were standing next to one. Now imagine weaponizing that. Imagine being able to stun something just by screaming at it really, really loud. I will note this is just a theory and more research has recently come out that modern sperm whales mostly use this ability for very long range echolocation, though it was previously thought this was used as a weapon. So it's still in the air. Again, this is just a theory. So let's recap. Liviton could see Megalodon coming from miles away. It could outthink it. It could ram it. It could scream at it loud enough to cause some type of damage. And if all else failed, it could bite down and crush its cartilage skeleton into powder. For the first time in its evolutionary history, Megalon was facing something that had more ways to kill than it did. Multiple backup plans, a whole arsenal of weapons, and the intelligence to use them strategically. Suddenly, being the biggest, baddest predator in the ocean didn't seem like enough anymore. All right, so time for the fun part. What would actually happen if these two titans throw down? Well, first off, forget everything you think you know about underwater animals fighting. Most of the time when big sea creatures fight, it is quick and brutal. There's usually one good hit and it's over. But when you have two predators this size and this well armed, things can get complicated fast. Megalodon's game plan was always the same. Cruise up from the deep water, hit hard and fast, take a massive bite, then back off and wait for the blood loss to do the work. It's classic shark behavior. It's been working perfectly for millions of years against slow, panicky whales that had no idea what hit them. So why change that now? The problem is, Liviatan wasn't slow, and it definitely wasn't panicky. This whale could see the attack coming from a mile away thanks to its sonar, so Megalodon's hunting strategy just became completely useless. But let's say Megalodon actually managed to land a hit. Those serrated teeth were designed to slice through blubber and flesh. Against most whales, that's a game over. One good bite to the belly or chest, and you're looking at massive blood loss and organ damage. Here's the problem. Leviathan wasn't built like other whales. This thing was basically a swimming tank. Thick blubber, dense muscle, and bones that could take a serious beating. A bite that might gut a regular baleen whale might just minorly injure and make Leviathan angry. Really, really angry. And that's where the real nightmare begins for the Megalodon. Because once Leviathan gets its jaws on you, the fight is over. Remember, this whale's teeth weren't designed to slice. They were designed to grab and crush. Once those conical teeth sank in, they weren't coming out. Now, here's the part that should make you uncomfortable. Megalodon's cartilage skeleton is great for flexibility and speed, as we mentioned before, but it is absolutely terrible at handling crushing pressure. So you've got a whale whose entire jaw system was built to crush bones, fighting a shark whose entire skeleton was basically made of the ocean's version of rubber. This matchup was so unfair, it's almost funny. Almost. The killing blow would have been swift and horrible. Liviatan gets those jaws around Megalodon's head, spine, or gill area, and it's over. Those massive jaw muscles clamp down, the foot-long teeth punch through, and then comes the crushing force. Snap! The cartilage skeleton just gives away. But wait, it gets even worse, because Liviatan didn't just bite and release its prey. This whale could grab and shake. Imagine tons and tons of angry whale thrashing around with a 60-foot shark clamped in its jaws. That's enough force to pretty much break anything. And if somehow the bite didn't work, Liviatan had backup plans. That massive head could ram at full speed and probably cave in the Megalodon's skull. Megalodon, on the other hand, was basically a one-trick pony. If that initial ambush bite didn't work, it was in serious trouble. Its whole strategy relied on being the biggest, scariest thing in the water. But the first time ever, it wasn't. Now, you might be wondering by now why any of this actually matters. Two big predators fought each other millions of years ago. So what other than it's kind of cool? Well, turns out this little rivalry basically rewrote the rules on how oceans work. See, there's this thing in biology called competitive exclusion. It's a fancy name for a simple idea. Two species can't do exactly the same job in exactly the same place forever. One of them has to win, lose, or find something else to do. And when you're talking about apex predators, find something else to do usually isn't an option. For 16 million years, Megalodon had the ocean's top job all to itself. Then Liviton showed up and wanted the same job, in the same places, hunting the same prey. This was never going to end with a polite handshake and a let's share agreement. One of them was going to have to go. But there's one final twist to this story that changes everything. The final twist? Both of them lost. 
That's right, all of this buildup about the ultimate oceanic death match, and nature pulled the rug out from under both of them. Leviathan vanished from the fossil record around the same time Megalodon started its decline. Turns out being a 60 foot killing machine doesn't mean much when the whole ocean starts cooling down and your favorite prey goes extinct. The climate changed, the easy to catch baleen whales disappeared, and suddenly being a massive energy hungry super predator was a liability instead of an advantage. Both Leviathan and Megalodon were too specialized too big and too dependent on a world that no longer existed. So who inherited the ocean? Smaller, smarter predators that could adapt, orcas that hunt in coordinated packs, great whites that can survive on whatever's available. The age of the solo giant was over. In the end, the only thing Megalodon had to fear was the same thing that got them both, change. I had a blast making this video. This is one of the coolest topics I have covered, I think. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give the channel some hype as it really helps new YouTubers grow. Also, like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And if you want to watch another one of my videos, you should click the video on screen now.